Hello, and welcome to Torch Fund Analysis with Bloomberg. My name is David Edelson, and as a past Torch Fund Manager and current Ambassador in the Master's Investment Learning Center, I will be walking through the first of two training videos that will help prepare you for your duties as a Torch Fund Manager. Today's video will focus on stock research and the respective tools available in Bloomberg to assist you in your analysis. Before I begin, I would like to point out that this is meant to be an overview of some of the most commonly used functions and screens, yet there are numerous other advantages to Bloomberg's functionality that you will discover once you develop your own research style. For purposes of today's analysis, we will be looking at McDonald's Corporation, ticker MCD. I would like to begin by going to the equity description page by typing in the ticker MCD pressing the yellow equity key, typing in DES for description, and then go. I want to draw your attention to this upper right hand corner where we can see that this is page 1 of 10. I advise you to look here whenever you go to a page you are unfamiliar with to check how many pages are associated with that particular function. The description page is a great starting point when first doing research on a stock. Page 1 provides a snapshot with a business description across the top as well as the industry the company operates in. The other three main areas of importance are stock data, dividend information, and earnings overview. The stock data provides some key pieces of information including current price, 52-week high and low, shares outstanding, market capitalization, and beta. The dividend information provides the amount of the dividend, the current yield, and a five-year dividend growth rate if available. And finally the earnings overview shows the company's next announced date trailing 12-month earnings per share, price-to-earnings ratio, and price-to-earnings growth ratio. Page 2 provides an overview of some key corporate information. As you can see, I can look here to find the company's corporate headquarters address, website, and number of employees at the top. This middle section here highlights the current management team, and you can click through here to read biographies on the team as well as view recent changes to the management team. The bottom section provides SIC and NAICS codes as well as the different indices the company is a member of. Page 3 is your key ratios overview. Here. The ratios are broken into six major arenas, including issue data, per share data, cash flow analysis, growth potential, profitability, and structure. Rather than go through each ratio, what I would like to point out here is that you need to use alternative sources as a check since there will be differences in how metrics are calculated. The UTK Library's website is a good place to go to find additional sources, such as Business Source Premier, LexisNexis, Mergent Online, Morningstar, Thompson Research, and ValueLine. Page 4 provides shareholder information, including our corporate action calendar at the top and ownership summary at the bottom. The Corporate Action Calendar summarizes the company's public offerings and the Ownership Summary highlights the buy-sell activity of corporate insiders and the breakdown of institutional ownership. Page 5 shows actual data for revenue and EPS by quarter for the past seven years and it also graphs this data for you. Page 6 shows product segmentation by revenue for three years of operations. And page 7 shows geographic segmentation by revenue for three years of operations. 
Our last three pages are the financial statements. Page eight is our income statement. Page nine is our balance sheet. And page 10 is our cash flow summary. One final note as it relates to each of the 10 pages on the description function is its interactive nature. Each page has links to more detailed data. For example, page 10, the cash flow summary, allows the user to either hit one go, as you can see here, or enter FACFGO, which takes us to the financial analysis, or FA screen, which we will talk about in more detail later. The second function that we are going to look at today is the analyst recommendation screen, or ANR. I'm going to enter MCD, equity, ANR for analyst recommendations, and go. Here, I can view consensus ratings from the street, including the number of buy, hold, and sell recommendations of each analyst that covers the stock. Further, at the bottom of the screen, I can view the recommendation of each specific analyst and their target price, if it's available. By clicking on the analyst, I can view other securities they cover, and by clicking on the ratings, I can view the analyst's historical recommendation. The next function we are going to view is the credit rating profile page. To access this function, I enter MCD equity CRPR for credit rating profile and go. Here I can see corporate credit ratings for three main ratings agencies Moody's, Standards and Poor's, and Fitch. By clicking on a particular rating I can see the date of the ratings and how the ratings have changed over time. For example if I look at McDonald's rating for senior unsecured debt as rated by Moody's, I can see that on December 17th, 2010, the company was upgraded from A3 to A2. Our next function is the beta page, and I access it by typing MCD equity BETA and go. Here we are comparing our security, the y-axis, to a certain benchmark, the x-axis, which in this case is the S&P 500 index. Notice that the default date range is for two years, but I can manually change this if I want to look at a different time horizon by typing in the amber box. The raw beta reported here is the true number, while the adjusted beta is modified by the assumption that a securities beta moves toward the market average over time. Next, I want to highlight the weighted average cost of capital page. I'm going to type in MCD, equity, WACC for weighted average cost of capital, and go. Here, I can view the company's capital structure and the breakdown of its three main components, equity, preferred equity, and debt, in the upper right-hand corner. I can also view the calculation for WAC in the top left portion of the screen. If I click on the cost of debt, I can see how Bloomberg is doing this calculation. I can also click across the top here to view the calculation for the cost of equity, and the cost of preferred equity. As discussed earlier on the description page, for a full view of financial statements, I want to go to my financial analysis page by typing MCD, equity, FA for financial analysis, and go. The default is my statement summaries, but I can navigate down the left side of this page to view different statements. I encourage you to explore the left-hand side toolbar for many of the options available. For this exercise, let's click on income statement. 
As you can see, I have three years of data in view. If I collapse my left hand side toolbar by clicking these double arrows, I can now see five years of data. I can also change my zoom in the bottom right corner to view more years. And I can also change my default periods from annual to quarterly in the upper left hand corner. I also want to highlight some of my options across the top. If I click on growth right here, I can see year over year growth rates for each line item. If I click on common size, I can see the percent of revenue each line item, each line item makes up. Finally, if I click on 96 actions in this drop down, and then select 85 output to Excel, Bloomberg will export the data into an Excel sheet. Be aware that this exports into a sheet with Bloomberg formulas, so if you attempt to open it on a non-Bloomberg computer, the formulas will ref out. I suggest you copy everything as values before attempting to open on another computer. The next two functions I will go over relate to competitor analysis. The first is the relative valuation page, and I navigate here by typing MCD, my equity key, R, V, and go. As you can see in my upper left hand corner, the default view is my Bloomberg peers. I can edit columns across the top by typing in the amber box next to add column and utilizing the autofill feature. For example, let's say I wanted to add dividend data. I would start by typing dividend and dividend yield shows up. I can click this, then choose the period I want. I will select current for this exercise and then press enter. As you can see, the current dividend yield column is created on the right, and now I can compare it across my target company's competitors. The second function related to competitor analysis is the peer product comparison page. For this exercise, I'm going to use Pepsi. I'm going to use PEP -E for my ticker, equity, PPC for peer product comparison, and go. The top section here shows me the different product categories, and the bottom shows me the peers relative to the particular product category I have highlighted. For example, if I change the top from stack foods and confectionery to soft drink, you can see that my list of competitors updates at the bottom. Everyone is familiar with Top Go for worldwide news stories, but the next function brings up news for a specific company. By typing MCD Equity CN for company news, go, I can view company news just for McDonald's Corporation. My drop downs across the top, top picks, topics, companies, people, and regions are very important for narrowing my search. For example, let's say I wanted to look for news related to earnings. I can click on 21 top picks and my fourth option is earnings. This narrows my news search to earnings specific stories related to McDonald's. Lastly, Notice that under 99 options, I can set news preferences, bookmark stories, send my search, and much more. The next screen is our dividend split summary page. 
and I get here by typing MCD equity DVD go. If you remember, I could also view dividend information on page one of the description page. The DVD function allows me to view dividend history as far back as 2001 by simply scrolling through the values here. The final function I will highlight is price graph by typing in MCD equity GP go. Here I can view a historical price chart from my security. Notice that my default date range is one year, but I can customize this by clicking in the amber field in the upper left hand corner. I can also overlay events on the chart by clicking events in the upper right hand corner. As you can see, the events are coded. So for example, an E stands for an earnings release and it is color coded green or red depending on whether or not the company had a positive or negative announcement relative to the street's estimates. This concludes the torch fund analysis with Bloomberg Video as it relates to stock research.